Welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Tom. Howdy, everyone. Josh. Hey, everybody. And Adam. Hello, hello, hello. So, um, you as going? you can see, uh, Tom and I are in a little different location <laughs> than normal. Um, so, hopefully, this goes smoothly. Comcast, hopefully, is not going to fuck us in this new location yet. Hopefully, yet, yet. We're still working up to it. And for those, it's of you a clean on... slate. Yes. <laughs> and for those of you on stream, if you see us doing a lot of this, looking over weirdly to the left, it's because as of right now, that's our only monitor to view these two on. So yeah. We have that. Oh, wh- what? <laughs> but all you that need to said, see us. How are you guys doing this week? Good. Real good. Good. Pretty decent. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. Had some extra days off. That's always incredible. Oh, yeah. Some good turkey? (laughs) Um, I did have a little bit of turkey. Not a lot of turkey. I had a moderate amount of turkey because there was turkey and ham. Yes. And, you know, as it should be. As it always should be. A little bit of both. So um, Gina and I didn't have a Thanksgiving with anyone. We were supposed to go to my friend's house, but she got home super late from work. We wanted to relax, been going through a lot of moving. We just chilled at home. And then we that decided, nice. hey, let's go get some food because we don't have anything here. It's Thanksgiving, let's get some food. So we go to Safeway and they don't have anything hot and ready. We don't have anything to cook here yet, but we needed hot and ready. Nothing's there. When you say okay. hot and ready, that makes me very worried that you went to Little Caesars. Yeah, that's that's the first thought I <laughs> had. Honestly, I 100% <laughs> that's, you that's, went to Little Caesars. You got some Thanksgiving okay. hot and so ready. How, if I word it <laughs> not as acceptable. Grab it, does the word, <laughs> phrasing grab and go work better? Yeah, uh, I guess yeah, that can work. Well, yeah, that's fine. Food that is already prepared and warm in the store that I can purchase and immediately eat. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll right. go with that normal yeah. It's a little wordy, but that'll be my yeah, new grab and go. Yeah, that's very accurate, though. <laughs> can, but, we, um, can, we, can we truncate it into, like, uh, like I can't think of the letters. Hot yeah, something. We'll figure it out. Anyway, Prepared uh, meals. Regardless. <laughs> yeah. So we went there, and there was nothing. All they had was their standard groceries. There was no, like, um, the deli was all gone. Everything was like, fuck, it's Thanksgiving. What I expect? <laughs> Look around yeah. all the pizza chains. None of them open. Like, God damn it. How the fuck am I going to eat? And then all of a sudden we found out the Sherry's Pies was open. Sherry's Pies, for those of you on the East Coast, is like a really cool hybrid of Bob Evans meets Waffle House. Um, it's the only way I can really put it. And they make really, really good pies. Well, they're open on well, Thanksgiving. I- and they oh, had Thanksgiving what? meals. Like, I got a oh, slow shit. roasted turkey with gravy with mashed potatoes and really fucking good. Nice. But- damn. Devastated. Gina's never had pumpkin pie. Okay. So I see nothing wrong with this. Interesting. You don't need they, to. They have they have <laughs> all these pies. They're really good at pies. So, you know, they're slammed. Everyone's going everywhere with their orders. And the waitress comes back, it's like, ready for your check. I'm like, actually, like two pieces of pumpkin pie. I'm like, okay. She goes to the back, looks around for a little bit, comes back, it's like, oh, we're out. Oh shit. Wait, you're oh, how do you no. run out of pumpkin pie on Dude, Thanksgiving? They ran out of stuffing. They ran out of, they're running out of mashed potatoes. They ran Damn. out of mixed vegetables. Dude, this place was packed. Jesus. They, nice. They made bank. Huh. Because I guess, you know, a lot of people don't like to cook. Yeah. So, That's um, true. yeah, it was um, interesting. That was Damn. my Thanksgiving meal was at a bar, eats in Sherry's Pies. That works. Nice. It's not bad. I, I mean, everything works except for the pumpkin pie. Like, you got off easy. Dude. Pumpkin pie yeah. is awesome. Eh. Pumpkin pie is excellent. Eh. I'd yeah, rather have really literally any other kind of pie. Pecan? Yeah. You're crazy. Pecans Fucking... are, pecan pies are terrible. Dude, pecan pie is the hey, best, no, 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 man. No, 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 no. What about, what about Hang cow? On. Hang on. Cow pie. You cow pie a, would be probably better than means. pumpkin. Do you mean the shit or so, do you mean a shepherd's yeah. pie? <laughs> do you mean the <laughs> shit? Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I had this pecan pie and I, I agree most pecan pie is kind of bad. Because most of them are way too sweet and they've got that weird textured whatever filling stuff. So, but there was this little cafe place close to my house. It's no longer there, sadly. But they had um, a maple bourbon pecan pie. Oh, Jesus. Incredible. It was so good. 
but it's gone and I don't know where else to get that. It Aww. wasn't like a normal pe- pecan pie. It had a real hearty, not hearty, but a real ch- prominent maple flavor. It was so good. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds, that like sounds good. Like super sweet. It was pretty sweet, but not not any sweeter than any other pie, really. <laughs> the bourbon had to be excellent in that. Yeah. It was good. I, yeah, I, so I think <laughs> part of my I only ish- had one, but I miss it. <laughs> I think part of my issue when it comes to pecan pies, though, is I just don't like pecans. How do you not like oh, pecans? They're, they're pecans are good. I like buttery pecans. and crunchy, and they're the best kind of nut you can have. What? Yeah. The best. The best? Even above cashew? Let's- yeah, said we not, can we not go through this whole nut hierarchy? No, again? we're we doing it, man. Conversation with some other friends. And <laughs> yeah, got, yeah, we've, we've done this. It got heated and it got real ugly. Pistachios are hands down the best nut available. Pistachios, Pistachios are one of the worst. There, there's a lot less love for uh, for cashews than I thought. I thought there'd be a little cashews bit more cashews. Are, cashews are great. I love cashews. I, I love yeah, the yeah, cashew. That, that was a heated debate, so I don't want to dive into it. I don't want to. I don't want to spark old old <laughs> flames. And... <laughs> so, uh, so right. this is officially a uh, pecan lovers only podcast. Uh, I'm taking over. <laughs> okay, I'll just. Oh, okay. Shut <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I you won't let it go to take down over that because you don't like pumpkin pie. That's true. Oh, damn. That's true. I get shut down real quick. We're going full That's basic. This is a peppermint mocha only podcast. Oh my god! <laughs> even though, even though I'm breaking my rule, so I've got here a uh, a cup of cappuccino mix coffee because uh, Irk hasn't moved his coffee stuff over yet. And Tom's too mm. good for instant coffee. I am. I am. But you know what? I, I got to say, for instant, this ain't bad. I mean, it's it's mostly <laughs> sugar, but it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything cappuccino without actually doing espresso and frothing is going to just involve a lot of sugar. Yeah, basically. What are you on about? Huh? What? Frothing and sugar. So good. Cappuccino? <laughs> like you, I don't know. Either way. So good. <laughs> so, yeah. Josh. Oh, yeah? Let's move this bus along. Have you been playing anything? This- yeah. I mean... This week and last week, because I wasn't here, unfortunately. But oh, I man. have been playing uh, quite a bit. I've been playing quite a bit. Um, Do it. So I guess we're just gonna we're just gonna start from the top. Just take it from the top, my friends. I went to um, before I get into the games specifically. Um, let's get into where I went. Uh, Intel Extreme Masters came to my area. Uh, if for anybody that doesn't know what that is, it's a uh, um, it's a Counter Strike tournament. So, me and uh, me and a friend went to see professional Counter Strike played. I've never been to like what is a tier one esport, right? Because so it was a really cool event. There, like you know, you, it was uh, Phase versus Ninjas and Pajamas. Do you guys familiar with Counter Strike at all? Like as far as like it as oh, a yeah. competitive yeah. esport? Oh my gosh, it was it was insane. There was two things happening there. There was the uh, Counter Strike, and uh, and then there was also the PUBG Invitational. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so you had both going on at the same time, um, which was kind of weird. So they had the stadium split into what you would expect to be in would be in half, but they have it split. Three fourths going to PUBG, and one fourth going to Counter Strike. So oh. I don't know if yeah. So, but the thing is, is PUBG didn't even come close to the attendance that Counter Strike did. Not even in the ballpark, right? So there was people on that one fourth of the stadium, like packed into the seats, standing in the aisle, standing on top of each other, like sitting on each other's laps to watch this Counter Strike tournament. Damn. Um, it was really bad and it was really frustrating because you alternatively go to PUBG and there's like not nearly as much as maybe a hundred on that side maybe mm-hmm. and they're all spread out amongst this like giant area <laughs> so, so it kind of brings like into the question like is like the, the sheer amount of uh of space that a that PUBG actually takes up is insane absolutely insane because you can't have a small compact area, you you're stuck with like a I'm giant a stadium, place. right? Exactly. So right. It, and it was really frustrating just to go there. But anyway, the games were amazing. It was Phase versus Ninjas and Pajamas, as I said. 
phase is like the New York Yankees at the time because <laughs> they went and literally bought all the top pros from all the best teams. Nice. So kind of like uh, kind of like Team Secret for Dota. Yeah, they went in and they're like, okay, hundred thousand dollars, great per uh, per guy. They just bought everybody. Hundred thousand dollar contract <laughs> each one. They went and bought them and they're just crushing everybody because they're just insane. Each one of them can carry the game, you know. And then they went up against an underdog team, and the underdog team won. It was amazing. It was mm. absolutely amazing. It went to best That's of five. Cool. Um, it went to best of five and it was absolutely insane. It was, if you have, get a chance to watch any Counter Strike tournaments, watch that one. It was so good. Nice. Um, but uh, outside of that area, there was a bunch of demo booths. It was really great. Like they had a bunch of games and stuff all around the outside, so you can play. Obviously, Counter Strike. You can play PUBG. Um, it was really funny because when my friend came in, he's like. Oh, we should. I should bring my controller in. And I'm like, what do you mean, bring your controller in? Because he plays a lot of Smash. And he's like, yeah, there's always at these events, there's always a Smash Brothers booth, always. Hmm. And I'm oh, like, yeah. I'm like, oh, eh, I'm like, all right. He's like, he's like, nah, I'll just leave it. So he left it. And we go in. And we're walking around and we look at all the booths. And then there's the PUBG booth, where uh, it's a Razer booth, but they're all playing PUBG and it's all spread out like a, a long table. And if you want a uh, chicken dinner there, they give you a Razer peripheral of your choice really cool Ooh, nice. yeah, super neat. cool so uh <laughs> um so you're sitting there and uh there's little screens like like right over here so like they're looking at they're playing and they're looking at you and the screens above each player's head but then down in the corner in this little tiny screen <laughs> there's two folding chairs and there's Smash Brothers. It's right in the front. It doesn't make any sense why it was there. <laughs> it, it was just there. And I'm like, I guess you're right. <laughs> and he went in and he and he like played a bunch of rounds against some dude and and then we moved on. It was really it was super bizarre. <laughs> well, but, Smash um, Brothers has just always been on the scene. And it's never yeah, I mean, going away. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean Smash Brothers is like the grandpa of these esports now. It seems like that it just it's just there. It's persistent. Which kind of uh, kind of amazes me because you when you think of you know the granddaddy of esports like games right I would think maybe the original Street Fighter Two release on the Super Nintendo would fit better as kind of like the granddaddy of competitive yeah. gaming but mm-hmm. it ends up being Melee time well, and time again that happened it's at so time crazy before it was really popular where Melee kind of came in right when esports was starting to get some traction yeah i guess so which is also around, around like the starcraft era yeah. yeah which is why it's not a huge game in the esport it's just always there yeah it'll that's just true. never die that's true it's it's crazy uh because like a, it's a i always equate it to like wow for mmos like a lot of things that you use in today's like esport esport tournaments and stuff like that they're the same for you know all of the different esports to smash you know it's like you know like how when you play wow there's a lot of sayings and things that you do um that actually translate to other to other games right um even just like uh for for rocket league for instance we actually use that uh the smash gg is for smash that's that's what it's for that's why it's called smash.gg and now all the tournaments are for pretty much the entire scene is being ran through that really interesting and then yeah so anyway uh we kept walking around like this big circle because it's a big uh stadium right and they had uh oculus booth hmm. and it was really cool because I, I haven't played with an oculus i played with all the other ones uh, mm-hmm. even playstation but i've never played with oculus and they had um <clears throat> a really cool game called uh the unspoken um and what you do is like you're just like a guy on a pillar and then it's like 1v1 so there's me and my friend both had uh both had our uh own little setups and we were just we were facing each other it was really cool and we just like throw fireballs and you can jump back and forth between different pillars uh yeah it was it was a good time it seemed a little broken you had like a shield and a fireball but if like you shield and aimed it it would shoot right back at the guy but like what happened was they can block it and shoot it right back at you and then your shield breaks so it's like whoever fires first loses <laughs> so, because if you're just playing to that i don't know it just seemed a little off it seemed really exploitable yeah. but it was pretty cool it's really fun to see like uh vr just everywhere now especially at like a cool event like that yeah my, uh, my only my only fear with that is that it'll stay as kind of these sideshow booths and won't ever hit mainstream well let's be I honest mean, it's still costing 
six hundred dollars. Yeah, at, at the very least, at the floor, it's six hundred dollars to get it. It's still, That's yeah, why. it's still early. It's still it'll, early. It'll be another five yeah. six years until it comes the possibility of being a console. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't that. say that. It's already dropped in price significantly just this year alone. Like two hundred bucks, but once again, it's not the price of the hardware. It's the price of the hardware plus the computer. You have to have right, a but really I mean, good computer. but right, but then like PlayStation has their own VR, and it's actually okay. You know, you can get in there and play it and enjoy enjoy your VR experience just through that. Yeah, but as even far then, as like you're still looking seven hundred bucks. Right. I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's cheap. I'm not saying like I, like you can get it in a box of cornflakes or something. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying that you. Can, oh, look you at know. this! An HTC Vive. Cool. <laughs> so How do they good. fit this in the box? Yeah, it's incredible. Oh, it's so it. compact I now. I got a fucking gear. <laughs> <laughs> But that's it, you know, like it's going down. I, I don't know if it'll be uh, like seven years, but, you know, at some point it'll go down enough. It's just it's just how much like the gamers actually embrace, you know, uh, VR in general. Because, you know, they'll they'll drop the price and they'll make, you know, they'll manufacture cheaper parts if they really do it. But, you know, it's everywhere. They're really pushing it. and I really like it. Nice. Oh, uh yeah, it was really fun. It was that was a fun one to to run into. Um but uh speaking of like just like well going back to like the shooters and all that stuff, like when I used to play a whole lot of shooters, I used to play this thing called um Aim Booster. Have any have you guys ever heard of that? No. Aim Booster. No. So I, no. I used to play like a lot of shooters in the past, like a lot, a lot. And um what I used to do to like warm up is the same thing like the CSGO guys used to do. And that was you jump on aim booster and then you just, you know, you kind of click around a whole bunch <clears throat> and uh, it like populates little dots on the screen and then you, you move your cursor to click and then that kind of makes you a little bit snappier. I did it when I started playing overwatch again, it got me a little bit better. It was great. Hmm. But, um, but I haven't been playing any shooters, so I haven't really got into that. So I don't really, care to go on aim booster anymore <laughs> yeah i might but actually it... check that out because uh um, yeah. yeah i could really use that right now <laughs> yeah exactly so i i actually and i know you're going to talk about this later i did buy rainbow six so in yeah uh, in in preparation for that i wanted to go back on aim booster but uh, a friend of ours dark souls was playing a game called osu and i don't know if you guys have heard of that but it's kind of like Elite Beat Agents. I don't know hmm. if you guys have played that. Oh yeah, that was uh, my jam uh, back in the day, man. It's so it's so good. So basically, it's a lot like Aim Booster. You're clicking, in, you're you're moving your mouse and you're clicking at the circles to the rhythm of the beat, right? Um, there's little slider things. There's little spirally things. I'm sure there's more, but I'm trash, so I have those things. <laughs> but it's a lot like Aim Booster. You're just trying to snap around, move around. Um, and uh, just kind of get your response times and re and clicks uh, faster. So I'm I'm super amped to play this. Dark Souls insane at this. If any of you have not watched Dark Souls play Osu, then you, you just need to you need to guilt trip him into watching into, into playing it and then just watch it because it is just out of control. Um, yeah. it'll, it'll be a long time before I'm as good as him. <laughs> yes, I was but, watching Soul play that before the stream. Uh, prepping a little bit and my god that guy is i'm glad you told me he's not using a mouse yeah I thought he was so, doing so, that with so, a mouse and i'm like dude he would murder anyone in an fps it's super <laughs> interesting because like what he had me do is like so so all the songs you can download off their website and people other people make them like the maps or whatever i think they're called they're called beat maps mm -hmm. and uh you know people draw in where they want you know all the different things to pop up and populate Right. Um, and uh, so you download off the site. Everything's super custom, uh, uh, customizable. He went and uh, Dark Souls sat down with me and set everything up. So that was awesome. And now it's just crazy fun. Um, but yeah, there's there's some insane stuff out there as far as like difficulty and like how complicated it is. But it's uh, it's really fun. And I'm going to be trashing it for a long time, but eventually I'll get OK at it. <laughs> But they all use. Uh, I make the really good players all use a stylus. Oh, a stylus. Which, yeah, that they makes use a lot more sense. So they make they use a, a Wacom tablet and a stylus, and um, okay. and they also don't use the mouse clicks. 
They use keyboards. What the little <coughs> bit I've seen of that game looks like an absolute nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> I no, can't I'm even, not doing that. And I couldn't yeah, even yeah. imagine because I didn't I didn't know how the game was controlled. I mean, I assumed after looking at it, it's probably a mouse or something, but it just seemed way too like unrealistic it's to be able so to do that with bad. a mouse. Yeah, and the clicks are insane, right? Like the clicks that they're doing are just like like there's one where he was doing where it goes like it comes through and it's like a snake and a big circle and stuff and it's all just one click so you have to click each one all the way through Mm -hmm. and um you actually don't use your mouse to click you can use a keyboard you can use the mouse that's what i'm doing because i'm a plebe um but you uh, most people bind it to um like a keyboard button so you like one and two you're really quick uh, or tilde and two or whatever you want to (coughs) do um and then you just kind of hammer out the keys as you go through it's just absolutely crazy man <laughs> yeah way too crazy but um yeah so that's what I, I played a little bit of that um so we also have uh at um we always have that board game mondays we did video games this time and we did keep talking and no one explodes i love that, that game that's, a good that's game. such a good time that's that such great. oh my god well so we we got our little crew together, right? And we've been playing board games a lot. We every once in a while we'll do keep them talking, and we finally made some actual progress. Because like when a new person comes in, we always go back to the first level and yeah, play through yeah. it, and yeah, then yeah. okay, and then I'll go back to the first level and play through it. And um, <clears throat> we got up to the point right before needy modules, and this is actually the furthest I've ever got in um, mm-hmm. in keep talking. I never really like spent a lot of time on it, but there yeah. was like there was some that were like you know, two minutes and 30 seconds, which were like crazy fast. And then there was one that was like yeah. eight minutes long, which was like super long time. <laughs> and, and you know what the hardest one was is just the one where you only got one strike. And yeah. oh, those are was, always the hardest. That was hands down the hardest one. Cause we're sitting there and we're like, which wire do I cut? Are you sure? <laughs> are you, sure? Are like, you really sure? Really, like you really better sure. Be sure. Cause we are going to get screwed. <laughs> and we did and we failed it a lot a lot of bad <laughs> yeah. shit happens on the one strike yeah but, so uh, did you know uh way way back i'm not gonna say way back uh when they were creating <laughs> that game they actually built in uh distraction modules um but the way they did it uh is not like out on the actual bomb itself um if you were doing really good and they knew okay he's got like three minutes left and he's completed almost you know all but two of the puzzles so clearly mm-hmm. the team is doing really well um what we're going to do is we're going to shut off the uh, lights or make an alarm blare or have the alarm clock start going off and those things yeah. will dynamically fuck with you the better you're doing at the game if you're doing really bad and it's down to the wire they will fuck with you less than they normally I would oh nice yeah, yeah we were getting fucked system. with a lot it's really cool <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is like uh when i'm doing wires at like the or advanced wires and they shut off the lights and you're like oh it could be blue it could be something totally different i have no idea you're gonna have to wait like yeah, it's yeah. it makes it so hard but uh yeah no it's it's uh it's super fun we have like a couple friends on my friends list that play it and we're just trying to beat them <laughs> that's all we care about we don't care how we do as long as we beat like a couple there's a couple of my friends that are way up there mm-hmm. um actually vanner uh from our rocket league team is way up there as far Ooh. as uh oh, okay <laughs> i didn't know yeah i had no idea either but Very yeah he's cool. way up there as on my on my list but um yeah finally made progress feels good we need, man we should play that again sometime soon yeah those we should module, those needy modules suck though oh my god I know. they're so bad they're so bad i'm so excited it's so yeah. cool because when you start getting into that game you really start like developing your own language you're like all of like especially symbols, especially the symbols yeah yeah you're like what's that you're like oh uh pigtail there's an alien ringing a doorbell there's a <laughs> <laughs> You come up with like random garbage. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's really fun, especially because <laughs> no one knows what the actual symbols are. Yeah, like, <laughs> was it like A with a penis or something? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a with a penis is good. I'm gonna adopt that one. <laughs> yeah, we. Oh man, I wish we still had like our yeah, terminology fun. around. Oh, yeah. that'd be great. That's how you get good at that game. I swear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we played that. Um, recently, I I've been playing, still playing Trials Fusion. Um, really, really liking that game. Beating Shane, if he's in chat, Shane, uh, I'm beating you. 
currently. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Call it out. Um, I, I can't just yeah. drop stuff like that in chat. <laughs> yeah, I did because I, I, I also want. It's. I think that's the funnest part about that game right now. I think that's hands down the funnest part. It's like facing your friends because he's the only person I have on my friends list that actually plays that game. It's just <laughs> him. <laughs> so it's just me versus him. And if he gets boots it back up and beats me, then that's great. Then I get something to do. <laughs> but uh, I got to the freestyles portion of that. So I'm beating Shane up to the freestyles portion of that. And freestyles are freaking hilarious because it's like it's like you do a trick but you also have ragdoll physics at the same time. And I've never experienced that in any game ever. So like there's the motion of the bike and then you can remove your, your, like you move your arms, like how it's connected to the bike. So like, here's your bike, here's the rider. Right. And then you can rotate the bike and you can rotate the guy with his arms. Right. Like that. (laughs) And so what happens is his legs just dangle. And so when you're doing a flip and you rotate the bike and you rotate the guy, it does like this, like a crazy like ragdoll thing and it's the <laughs> funniest shit i've ever seen <laughs> they did not think at all about the freestyle portion of that game <laughs> it huh. is stupid <laughs> but it's a good time it reminds me a lot nice. of skate um well in the uh also in the spirit of christmas since thanksgiving's over we can go into christmas right is that how it works no yes, yes. no Yes. What? So right Before you get into no, the game, but, hold on. Um, Wait, rehash but... the concept. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm ready. I already got my my uh, Christmas shirt. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to rock. <laughs> For those listening, it's it's a lovely Christmas sweater with a picture of Mike Tyson. It says, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so the 12 games of Christmas, I don't know if everyone here knows what we're doing, but hopefully uh, this will re-educate people. <laughs> we're doing, yeah, we're, we are going to force... Re-educate. Them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What's it? There's a better term for that. That doesn't sound so shitty. But anyway, I'm just going to go with it. Remind. That's the word. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to re- uh, reform you we're guys. We're going to forcefully remind you. We are going to... Anyway. So... um. 12 days of Christmas, we all are buying each other a game. Like, I'm buying Eric, Tom, and Adam a game. Tom's buying me, Tom, Eric a game, etc. And it's it's been really good so far. Some of the games that have come out of it have been awesome. I've watched all of them. They're so cool. Um, Mother Russia Bleeds was awesome. Oh my yeah. god. That was Down, so fun Down to watch. Really it really was. So it's, it's Down a well size- is the one I was watching the most. The side-scrolling, yeah. double dragon esque made by Devolver Digital, so it's just incredibly bloody and gory, and oh god, the <laughs> thumping soundtrack reminds me of Hotline Miami. Uh, <laughs> it, it is an excellent game, one I will be beating shortly. Oh, that's Very so cool! cool. You better be streaming that. that. I need to watch oh, you will. stream the rest of that. Absolutely, do that. Well, anyway, I did. I got uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer, and that was from uh, from Adam, right? Yes, I think so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's totally silent. Like, no. <laughs> oh, I, call. I know that. Yeah, I don't think it was. I know me. it was. I don't think it was. Yeah. I know. I know it was. I know it was from Adam, and that yeah. game was amazing. You've talked about it on the cast, but I am not a rhythm game person for the most part. Mm-hmm. So it's a so to you know remind everybody <laughs> um, <laughs> about. <laughs> about uh, what that game is is it's a um it's a roguelike rhythm game and you yeah. you know you you're navigating through a dungeon just like you would in any uh roguelike game but you can only move to the beat and you can only attack yeah. to the beat and all your enemies are moving to the beat and attacking to the beat and uh so it becomes like kind of like a puzzle thing like you know you're trying to like orient yourself so that you can attack them they can't attack to you and mm-hmm. it was amazing the soundtrack was amazing like it it, it just <laughs> that, felt that so opera good. singer that just randomly pops in the song <laughs> the <room. It's> so <laughs> good I, I ended up Best just waiting for him ever. oh yes. my god i ended up just waiting for him i i like jump over to where he's at you know like doo, 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 and i just kind of dance in the room until he started singing because i just wanted to hear uh hear what his part of the song is yeah (laughs) because like if you don't find him you know and you're jumping around you don't hear his opera part but like if you're Mm -hmm. close he sings and uh it's cool because each level is a different song and it's just freaking so funny and so cool 
and yeah. really, yeah. really hard. <laughs> yeah, I got to. <laughs> um, I didn't ahead. think about the fact that you weren't good or into rhythm games when I got that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But no. the reason the reason I bought that is because Tom has talked about how much he loved it. It's and so it much cool. fun. That, now, Josh, oh, it, just so, so I you know, that I would am, be a good. I'm also trash at this game. I am horrible <laughs> at yeah. Crypt of the Necro Dancer, but I have so much fun jamming out while playing that game. Yeah, the music oh, on man. that was really, really good. Oh the yeah, you just great. get into the beat, man, and you're flowing with the groove, and it's just fucking rad. And the game's cheap right now. Uh, let me let me yeah. check the price on it. It's really cool. I love the the idea that when you're jumping around and there's different traps, but the traps affect the speed of the beat for the most part. Like Three a bucks. lot of them, a lot of them will like speed it up, slow it down. Three bucks is a freaking steal. Whoever doesn't right? have it, buy it right now. That game is yeah. insanely good. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So that that game is just awesome. Like I I love how everything works. It's it's nice and surprising. The other enemies have like attacks that I didn't know they had in some scenarios. There's new weapons. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of different weapons you can use as you unlock them. It's just super good. You guys should absolutely play that game. And it was three bucks. <laughs> like you can't, you just can't beat that. Um. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there was a game that was suggested as a postcast community game that we haven't decided on if we're going to do it we're going to talk about it we're going to other people are going to play it but me and tom got a introduction to this game uh it was by our very own meme manager dave (laughs) it's called tower unite what uh so anyway tom what did you think about this game because i have a lot of opinions about this game (laughs) and they're all different (laughs) <laughs> okay um so it's it's hard for me to talk about this game because i know what they're trying to do and it's the same thing that a lot of game companies have really tried to do um mm-hmm. which is create a virtual world uh just a, a space where people can exist and they can own a house and you can like put stuff in there and just basically make the world your own um and then on the side you have mini games and and they like to say that no 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 the mini games that we're building are the core game and everything else is just a side thing that's not the way this is going to turn out um regardless of how they say yes uh we're we're building the main ga- the mini games first and then everything else secondary that's not what the community is latching on to the community is latching on to taking plots of land uh making cool spaces for their friends to hang out and that's the way development is going to be driven in the future um i like the idea i've always liked the idea i liked the idea since even second life with its absolutely dog shit interface and controls it's second life is such a piece of shit Uh, but (laughs) the promise of second life is still alive and well right wanting to create a place where you and your friends can go hang out in a virtual world add on like modern vr support to that and it's fucking great um this won't ever take off it won't ever work uh, and Tower Unite will be dead within two years, guaranteed. Um, I the game is fun. It is a great concept. It is super, super rough around the edges. Um, but for the moment, uh, it is the most fun way to watch YouTube videos with your friends on the internet because we literally Hands sat there down. for two and a half hours and watched <laughs> shitty YouTube videos sitting on Dave's virtual couch watching his virtual TV. <laughs> It was a so lot of fun. Yeah, it's okay. amazing. So to clarify, it's just Mario Party meets Second Life in a way. Basically. So yeah. so it you get to you get, room do a similar thing. So it's yes. a lot like that from what I heard. Yes, I yes haven't played no. Rec Room. It, it's it's not though. But Rec Room is definitely focused on the games. Yes, Rec Room so is you, by far you, focused on the games, but you can't actually build a plot of land and like sit a couch in a corner of the room with Rec Room. It doesn't give you a dorm right. room to go populate, right? That might be a future thing that they do. But right now, Rec Room is all about, hey, do you want to go play disc golf or laser tag or uh, fucking charades with your friends? Like, that's all Rec Room is about. And it's it's a lot of fun, but they're two, two totally separate ideas of what this type of thing can entail. This one's really fun. I actually really enjoy it. I would like it to succeed, to be I, fair. I would Mainly, too. the only reason I'm saying that is because it's so... 
it's it's so unique from what I've experienced in some of these type type of games. Like you you get dropped in to a server, you know, you come in, there's a big open little area and there's a whole variety of different games you can play like there is a uh there's an arcade which has like all sorts of little um little games there's a uh there's a casino which has like slot machines and you can play uh texas hold'em and stuff like that and then there's like the pier where you can go out and you can play like uh like a type racer game you can go bowling you can ride one roller coaster there's one roller coaster (laughs) but it is fun um and it's really that's like the that part of the game and the other part of the game is you know you're playing all these you like these super monkey ball like i haven't played super monkey ball in forever and it was a that fucking was fun. blast it was fun what but that's that's super it that's ball. the point Whoa, hold on you've never played super monkey what? ball holy oh, shit okay, i'm putting the brakes on this whole conversation let's, yeah we gotta let's, shut let's, down the podcast oh. yeah no no so, the question is what is it though I okay mean, I, so I, super monkey ball super monkey ball uh is Basically, where imagine a modern take on Marble Madness. It's that. Try to get to the so end while you, okay, collecting you, items without falling off the uh, ledge to your death. Okay. Yeah. Did you? What's, yeah. What's Marble Madness? Okay, so did you oh, ever go to the dungeon? Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I got this. I had to explain this. All right. I had to explain this to a number of people already. Did you ever go to like a dentist office and they have that little like maze with a ball in it, and you have yeah. to move it around? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. So. It's that, but you're the ball, and you're in the ball, okay. and okay. you move around through a, the, a maze that you know you can fall off of. Okay. And, usually, and now they take it to the next level where there's like jumps and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, it's just fun. So the reason I really like Tower Unite, and we've played a number of different games in it. I played uh, quite a few other ones with other people, is because it's a game. There's a lot of games out there that are taken like this is a story. It has a deep, you know, you really need to get involved in this. You need to be a part of this. This is this will change you. There's, you know, there's other things that are competitive and you're like, you need to get good at this. You need to master this. And then you can enjoy this kind of thing. <laughs> this is just a game. Like you get on there and it doesn't matter. You're just hanging with buds. Probably drunk. <laughs> hanging with buds, <laughs> sipping some suds. Yeah, exactly. And there's hey, nothing more there's nothing more to do in that game besides that. It's like it's, it's just... not competitive. It's not it's not intense. It's not like it's not gonna tax your brain. You're just in there and you're laughing and you're running into each other and you're talking shit. And then I, when you're I done, say, you're gonna go to someone's house and you're gonna watch YouTube videos. It's a just a bunch. A bunch of the humor in this game is just because it's fucking absurd. Uh, either yeah. either because the game is so I don't want to say poorly made because they've got the early access tag and it is one of the heaviest alphas I've played in a very long time. Uh, but the fact that like oh you know what's not gonna be an- annoying at all a person <laughs> dressed up like a milk carton with throwing knives while you're trying to watch YouTube videos and you're just like wait that was great. what the fuck um I this game was ten dollars uh, it was gifted <laughs> to me by Dave thank you Dave I enjoyed my time with it I don't think it's worth people paying money to play this. maybe if it was like two bucks to get in the door or, or some kind can, of barrier I, I can I can see that I think if it was cheaper. I think I, I was re- recommended a lot more. Right now, yeah. it's on sale for ten bucks. It's actually more than that. Oh, I, yeah, no, it can't be even more than that. like even ten bucks I, is hard to do. I don't like. I can't really say that it's worth that much money. I think, especially once once they like polish everything up, and maybe if they if they make it real, you know, functional on every level, maybe they add all the content that's showing up slowly, maybe. But it doesn't like. One, I don't one know. of the biggest issues with Tower Unite is the freedom it gives players. So uh, oh. <laughs> it does let you it does let you go visit other people's apartments and condos, right? Uh, but mm-hmm. the game gives you these things called canvas elements. Uh, so you can take an image and upload it and put it in the game, and you can have it be a picture frame or a little trophy or a texture on a model. Um, and that's an issue because. You can literally put anything on there. There's there's no gates. There's no people, uh, you know, checking your content off. There's no one keeping it E T or even M rated. 
Uh, so luckily we shut off the stream and we said, okay, we're going to go visit some guy's apartment. We have no idea what's in here. We're shutting off the stream. So we turned it off. And then Josh and I found ourselves in the middle of what can only be described as a hentai porn palace. Um, (laughs) it was three stories yeah three three stories stories yes three stories Um, every room apparently each of Uh, these rooms had a different theme to it like the whole thing was just fucked and there was a guy there because he has to be there to host the the room server that you can join on him right so he's just like sitting there while people are visiting his porn palace like this is totally normal (laughs) hey guys want to come over to the fap dungeon today (laughs) i'll see you there um Okay. Are you really are you really surprised though? No, oh, it's man. I'm, I'm oh. not. It's part of the internet. This is the exact kind of game that would lend itself to that kind of stuff. Second Life ran into these exact same issues. Um Yeah, I I honestly think it's stuff like this which is going to color tower unite. Uh a really a really nasty shade. Instead of people looking at it and go, "Wow, I can hang out with my friends." They're going to go, "Wow, there's a bunch of porn dungeons everywhere." Um, you know, it'd be cool is if they just released the YouTube portion of it just as a su- super cheap thing and you could just hang out with friends and see, watch that, YouTube. That would be cool, but those yeah, websites already a, exist. Yeah. That, that's been a thing for a while. Yeah, I mean, even, no, but even like Google Hangouts in, back in the day did that. But I like the idea that you can... Oh, I know that you can watch YouTube with friends. I know that. I know that exists. I just like the idea of you being at the, like in the house with random people coming in and then you can also like play the piano and play the drums and people can sing on like a microphone, which has a different effect. It was neat. It was weird. Yeah, I don't it, know. It was <laughs> interesting. I would like to see it succeed. I just... I'm not betting that it It's will. not worth the... I don't think it's worth the price, but it was pretty cool in the time that we spent. It was I interesting. Some, I got some serious laughs out of it. Absolutely interesting. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, I played a lot of games, you guys. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. This is a giant uh, list here. But I'm trying to get... I'm trying to get through it. We're, we're well, <laughs> well more than way through it. Um, one thing that I'd like to talk about, even though it's going to feel a little lame, especially going through such a big list, is Rocket League. Uh, and the only reason I want to talk about it specifically is because there's a map contest going on. And I don't know oh. if you guys know, but there's a workshop in Rocket League, and you can download maps and play all these cool maps. And currently, there's a map contest going on that the um, the subreddit, I think it's Rocket League Mods, are putting on and a bunch of really cool maps have popped up so if you have rocket league you should check some of these out there's a race that is like kind of you know see through and has loops and stuff Mm -hmm. um there's another game mode called king of the hill where um there's two mountains on either side and there's a forest in the middle and you have to shoot the ball to the top of the hill plays really neat and then there's one that's really interesting i did not expect at all is a mech warrior fighter (laughs) <laughs> where you you drive in and you become this mech warrior and you're shooting rocket cars that they come at you and you're just kind of pivoting around. It's really cool. What? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't know you could do this kind of stuff with the rocket. I mean, I understand the Rocket League engine can do it, but I didn't know that you can do it with like mods. So it's it's cool. I really hope that these like take off and inspire people to start doing crazier and crazier stuff with Rocket League mods. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to skip Dark Souls for the sake of everybody. <laughs> uh, Jesse's really good at Dark Souls. I suck at Dark Souls. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, I watched the cast uh, when I wasn't on, uh, and you guys talked a little bit about Trove and about mm-hmm. how like you didn't know if there was an end game or how that would expand um, and how it kind of felt really grindy. Well, I played a little bit more with Tim. Um, later on and we were we were working our way up and he was kind of explaining to me some of the end game stuff and kind of how it functions like there is harder areas but it's all end game stuff so and it's only at level 20 that you have to get to to, to experience it and we all got halfway there so so oh, wow. well my I'll question is to... what's end game there's no story so uh um, have to so be the, a story for end game if they strip if they stripped all of the lore out of world of warcraft do you think anybody would stop playing no, no, what I'm saying, that's not end game content. Then end game implies it's stuff you do after you beat the game. That that is why. No, 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 that, that is no, not no, no, what that no, implies. No, no, that's not what that implies at all. The game. Yes. Right. End game so, in an MMO is I. Hey, it's the original World of Warcraft. I've hit level sixty. I've hit my level cap. What's there left for me to do? That's right. what end game means in in an MMO. So in this particular situation, the end game is 
20, right? You have characters. Um, there's a whole bunch of them. So you have the base characters, which you guys all got to pick, right? There's expanded characters that are like advanced characters that you guys didn't get to pick. And when you get to level 20, you get to create a new character and pick one of those and get that one through. Uh, they call it mastery level 20 of those characters. So you get a free one of the advanced character. Mm-hmm. And every time you get to level 20, you get a new character you can try. And the craziest thing is you can swap those out on the fly. You don't have to down, you don't have to create a new name or a new title. It keeps to the same fabric of Trove where you just go in, go out, go in, go out. It's all super fast. You don't have to stop for any reason. Which is super dope. Endgame has a big like like these big shadow towers that are really, really difficult to beat, apparently. So um as you progress through the game, like Adam was saying uh last podcast, you know, each area is where you level up too. That's kind of like when things start changing. And as you go through those areas, they do get more dynamic, as Tom was saying. They didn't feel very dynamic. I think Tom and Eric were both saying that they didn't feel very dynamic. They felt just kind of like a new color palette they do change and the dungeons do get more complicated and they do get more interesting on top of that once you get beyond that you can start setting up guilds and you can start trading with people so we currently have a 72 pc hub world that tim and uh well slowly i am working on and so it's all getting built up so if anyone's interested to dive in and out of that let us know we'll add you to the club world you can check things out it's it's really good so I'll be reporting back once I actually hit that in-game content to tell you if it lives up to the hype. <laughs> <coughs> so there's that. <laughs> um, beyond that, I played uh, PUBG again after playing a shitload of Fortnite. Uh, and it's slow. It's really slow. It and does feel really slow. So we, it we was play, good. Uh, it's not bad. Yeah, it's it's, it's not bad. <laughs> we, we played a, a bunch of Fortnite last night. Uh, we got some groups together yeah. and and ran through. Uh, Dlas fucking like wrecked a guy with a pickaxe, which was hilarious. No, yeah, um, so that, was, yes, uh, that was actually we, we an amazing up. clip. Yeah, that, there's yeah. Uh, get in our Discord. Uh, you can find it. Uh, go to seven two pin connector dot com. Click on Discord. It's in general chat. We're on Twitch. You keep it forgetting. We have it on our Twitch page. Oh, okay. So look on yeah, our Twitch page. I guess yeah. if you wanted yes. to scroll <laughs> like some sort of peasant, um, yeah. and and check out the clip there. Uh, it's fucking hilarious. Uh, really but yeah, we had a lot, we, of, we we had a jumped, lot of good moments. We did that, and that night. The the best part is every time like we jumped right into the middle of the city, we got fucking wrecked within like three or four minutes, and then we got out and got right back in a match in what forty seconds, maybe. Yeah, probably. A and minute, in, maybe in playing PUBG, I played like mm, five rounds of that on my own, just going solo. Jump into the middle of Pochinki, get my fucking shit wrecked, jump into the middle of the school, kill two people, get my shit wrecked. But every time I had to wait about a minute or two between games, and that doesn't sound like a lot. Like, it, it sounds like a really spoiled gamer thing. Oh, I had to wait two whole <laughs> minutes to get into a new round. But right. When you compare it to Fortnite, which isn't that way, which is 30 to 40 seconds to get into a new match, it is a decent amount of downtime compared to the competition. And I really like how Fortnite feels really snappy. Yeah, when I d- when I was diving into that, I I sat. We played for an hour, and we got into one fight. I killed two people, and then I died. And that's not a problem. Like that's not yeah. bad. That's just that game. That's how that game works. Like the skill the skill ceiling is is different. It's not the same thing. With Fortnite, everything's tighter. Everything's smaller. You get in there, you fight people like me and RS died like five times in, in a half hour, but we were just fighting people and we constantly were fighting people. We'd we'd win fights, we you know, we'd get another fight, we'd win a fight, we'd get another fight. It was just like bam, 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 bam. It was so fun. And I don't know. I guess it's just a it's just a flavor thing, you know? Yeah, I like them yeah. both. I'll play them both. But you know, after actually truly going back after playing Fortnite, I think I actually do prefer P- Fortnite by like a long shot. Yeah. And we've we've talked about this topic a lot. We've basically beaten it into the ground. Uh, and I think unless we've got new data, this is probably the last you'll hear about this. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's just something that I really wanted to... Because we talked about it, and I hadn't circled back ever and confirmed it to myself. And it was kind of like a really impactful moment for me when I actually really saw, like, oh, 
yeah no <laughs> yeah I, re- I really did feel that way but anyway tom we killed a guy with pickaxes yeah we did <laughs> it was we did. brutal <laughs> oh my god okay we, we doubled we teamed up on him <laughs> we we found this guy in this house so there's like three people in this house adam and i are two of them we ran up on this guy. Adam got behind him. I got in front of him, and we just started wailing on this douchebag. <laughs> so pickaxes so do like the smallest amount of damage. Good. Like it probably takes like yeah. eleven hits to kill someone with a pickaxe. So Adam and I literally Wrong. just sat there swinging at this guy for <laughs> what thirty, forty seconds before he went down. Yeah. And then he finally went down. And we have to keep yeah. We have to keep wailing on him again after he's down. Like for the fuck's mm. sake, man, just die already. Give it up. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even get anything out of it because their, their friends came by and killed us afterwards. But damn, that felt good to bash someone up with a pickaxe. It took you guys 45 seconds. I watched Eli's do it alone in like five. Oh, Not even on. five. Yeah. It was just a single hit. With, yeah. well, oh, I mean, no, I mean the eight. setup. It was the incredible. Setup. Yeah. It was incredible. It was cool. Oh, my God. He had him like turning as he turned. And then oh, it was so oh, good. So good. And oh, then I learned, about, I learned about traps. Very harshly, <laughs> you did. Are so, awesome. so we got funny. pretty far. We got pretty far, and uh, we were doing well. I had all these great guns, and I'm just walking through this house. And there's <laughs> this. Uh, I didn't see it until it hit me, but there's this uh, device on the ceiling. And as soon as I got under it, I immediately died. I was electrocuted. <laughs> it was over. Yep. And I've never been more deflated. <laughs> In such a small amount of time. <laughs> I think we have a clip was, of that too, because you're walking along, yeah, talk to people, I, and then you're just yeah. dead. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> yeah. But that was um I had a lot of fun with that. We played a lot of that and it was good. Yeah, that was fun. I, I had a good time. I, I want to do more of that later. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, I still have to down. Do it. It's it's a, it's fun. Yeah. It's easy. It's just a good time. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday you said tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Do it. Do it now. I'll do it tomorrow. Right now. No, right now. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. While, while we're podcasting, do it right now. I don't think my Chromebook. Fuck the frames. My, my Chromebook can't handle that. Yeah, it can. Do it. It's actually really easy yourself. to run. It's a lot easier to run than PUBG. Well, okay. <laughs> also, more. turn off post-processing, turn off shadows. Your frames will skyrocket in Fortnite. I, we learned that last night. I'm going to double my, my shadows. I'll add light sources to the map. So the, turning yeah. off the shadows and the post-processing will actually make the game a lot clearer. You won't get that weird distance haze. So if you're sniping mm. and you turn off post-processing, it is far better for you. So pro tip, That's... post-processing, shadows, set them to low. Yeah. Okay. Speaking Fair of shadows and post-processing, stuff that has yes. absolutely nothing to do with what I'm about to say, Tom, oh, oh shit! Yeah. how was your VR shit going? I'm not prepared for a, a segue of this caliber of professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you specifically asked about my, my VR stuff, right? Yeah, because so, I didn't know where to take post-processing and shadows to anywhere else. So, Battle Right. <laughs> we played that for a postcast game last week. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, speaking it's of like, that. Think, think top-down Dota-ish game without all the creeps or map shit. It's literally just a big battle arena, and you have heroes that have different abilities. Yeah. I think the best thing to compare it to is actually Gigantic, Dota-ish. which is what we've done for post yeah. before. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Gigantic it's is just, probably, probably it's, better. It's more real-time combat. Well, it's it's you have to aim and, and fire yeah. and stuff. It's not click on the enemy and then use abilities. Yeah. Um... Yeah. I don't I don't know. I didn't hate this. I uh, I didn't love it. I don't think it's a bad game by any means. There's just nothing with everything there are so many good games today. There there are so many good there games. Are, we are so spoiled. The, we yeah, really absolutely. are. We really are. Remember it's the, like probably the best time to be a gamer right now. Do you guys remember absolutely. like when you went to like not even a name brand video rental store and you you picked up some shit on the shelf because the box art looked cool and you got home and the game was shit. But hey, you rented it, so you've got the next week to play that piece of shit game that's awful and you know it. <laughs> I used to go to the library. Our library had free videos. What? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Ours Mine did too. Mine did not. That's, that's why I first played Boulder's Gate. There was a they video rental place inside of that's our Kroger that I went to. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I, uh, I got Lion King on the Genesis. And uh, you know what level I kept dying on? Yeah, fuck yeah. that level. Okay, so here, quick question. <laughs> what was the first video game you've ever rented? Oh, rented? I have no fucking idea. My uh, first yeah. rental was NWO vs. the World. Oh, shit. 
for the 64. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was written I, like NES and in, uh, in Genesis you games. See, I was getting that shit from the library, yeah. so I didn't have to okay. rent it. And I was borrowing from mm. friends. Nice. I think the first game I ever rented was Boulder's Gate. Except I threw, I never brought it back. So does that count? <laughs> yes, that counts. Dude, wait, that wait, was, was that was that from Blockbuster? Are you responsible for taking out Blockbuster? No, it was, it was from the library. I, I I got it. I'm like, this is really good, and I just never ever brought it back. The, well, that earliest... takes like 80 hours to beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's their fault. Dude, okay. All right, hold on. We got to stop the world here. AOL Instant Messenger just said, I used to regularly rent Boogerman for the SNES if it was in stock. Holy shit, Boogerman was my jam. I had Boogerman so on the Genesis. Dude, I had Boogerman on the Genesis too. It was so good. It was, it's <laughs> like, if we go back and play it today, it's probably a terrible it's shit probably game. Garbage. No, I just no, asked no, AOL no, to even. clarify, and he said you fart on things to kill them and throw boogers at them. Yes. It sounds yes. like a shit game. It is so no, much fun. It's literally a shit game. Yes, thank and you, it, Adam. It ages fine. Actually, I played it recently. Really? Just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I put. Uh, so. Yes. Yeah, I play it on this Super Nintendo thing that I play things on. And honestly, a lot of those games age really well. Thing. Yeah, this thing. Like, I played thing. Lion Lion King recently, and it it ages fine. It plays fine. It's a pixel game, if it's you kinda, had to put it as something, right? It's, like, it's, probably, it's almost it, like a pixel art game, but it's To me, great. it felt... Boogerman felt like a knockoff of Earthworm Jim with added potty humor. And but as the a thing kid, is, I that's liked all I a wanted. lot of added potty humor. Yeah. <laughs> I liked Boogerman better than Earthworm Jim. I played ah. through Earthworm Jim and I did like it. And I liked I the just music. Up, I, I got Jim drawn better. back to Boogerman more. <laughs> like, I don't know what it was. It was just played... funny. The whole game it was, was just hilarious. No, that was a great game. I had a blast playing that game. So, in that's the end, actually the third game I boot up. In the end, <laughs> Battle Right is it not a bad matter. game. Uh, but compared to everything else out there, there's just nothing keeping me playing it. I actually really enjoyed it. If I had a group of two people to play that with constantly, I think I might keep because that okay. was actually a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. Um, I beat the story mode of Mario Odyssey, which is like the scratching the surface of what Mario Odyssey has to offer. And I get it. I totally agree with what you were saying. I was totally off base for calling you on it. Eight hours to mm-hmm. beat the story mode. I have no problem with it now. Uh, because the story because mode, I can't be right. Tom has to argue with the, me. No, the, the story mode, like if I if I hear, oh wait, it's it's a mostly it's a just fully a single player game, right? Yes, there's a, a multiplayer mode, but that doesn't really count because it sucks. Um, but it's a you know not story driven, but a, a mechanics driven first player single player game, and you beat the main game in eight hours. Like fuck that for sixty dollars, but. <laughs> What Mario doesn't tell you on the box is, yeah, the, the story mode is basically the tutorial. You have the entire rest of the game to go. And holy shit, I've got literally 600 more moons to go. I've got about 200. I've got 600 more to go. Holy 300, shit. 300 huh? is really your point. That's, that's your point. Oh, no, I'm going, I'm going 100%. I'm going to beat this game fully. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to go into anything spoilery, but if you are a longtime Mario fan, especially of the SNES and N64 era, what they do towards the end will just light you up. This is so much fun. Um, Yeah, yeah. they they play really well to nostalgia in that game. Um, What? They They don't play to nostalgia in that game. No, no. I mean, they do it tastefully (laughs) really, really well. It's not even tastefully. Like, sometimes it's just fucking overt. No, no, and no, I no, love it. Could it. Be, I love it every taste- minute of it. It could be very blatant and still be tasteful. <laughs> like, um, I'll just go and say the paintings. I love how they do those. Yes. Not, not the yeah, ones I'm, that I'm you- not. I'm not going to... Don't, don't go into it, but it's... Yes, I agree with you. I know what you're saying. It's great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you don't have Mario Odyssey yet, pick it up. It's fantastic. Uh, but in VR news... I played Pavlov VR, which is yet another early access game trying to be Counter-Strike. Um, it's okay. It's not worth paying for. Even um, if it was amazing, it's going to die the same death every first-person yeah. shooter multiplayer does on VR. Yeah. Two yeah. weeks later, it has no player base. Nobody's well, I, playing. This, is, this has been out for a very long time. It's been out for six months, I think, is when I bought it. That's six ancient in VR world. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yeah, just about is. dead. <laughs> Um, but I bought Pavlov VR a long time ago. It's really trying to be Counter Strike down to the buy menu and buying equipment and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a bad game. It's just a poorly made game. 
It's not good, uh, but the only reason it's fun is because it's in VR. Um, if you want a really badly made Counter-Strike in VR, Pavlov is kind of your game. That's exactly what I've been looking for. Yeah, so, all right. You know, when you jump into a first-person shooter, whether it's Overwatch or CSGO or uh, Rainbow Six, right? There's an objective, right? You have some objective. You need to bomb something. You need to defuse something. You need to push a cart. You need to do something, right? And the game will show you, like, it, even in Overwatch, they'll have, like, little icons that'll float as part of the HUD, or they've got arrows on the ground. In CSGO, uh, they've put, like, the A and B signs with arrows down different hallways, showing you, okay, this is where you gotta go to do this thing. So even if you're brand new to the game, but you know, oh, bomb site A, I'm holding a bomb, oh, I should go to bomb site A. It just makes sense, right? It's not intuitive, but it's nicely leading new players along. Pavlov mm -hmm. has none of that. I was playing terrorist. I had a bomb. I ran around literally the entire level with a stupid ass bot chasing me, and they are fucking stupid. And I had nowhere to plant it. The only way I find out how to plant it is when the teams flipped and I followed around some enemy terrorist. Okay, where the fuck is he putting it? Oh, right there. There's no signposting. There's no big X. There's no nothing. He just puts it on a pillar somewhere. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's that one. So I try it. I can't put it on the one to the left. Can't put it on the one to the right. I have to put it in that one specifically, but there's nothing differentiating it from the rest of the level. <laughs> what? That's yeah. excellent game design. That's perfect. It is. Sounds awesome. It's very poorly made, but uh, I played Team Deathmatch and it was fun. Taking an op and actually like looking down the scope and scoping someone out and taking them out. It's so much fun. Uh, I just wish the base game were better because it, mm. it really has the opportunity to be something better than it is. It just, I don't think the team has the skill to pull it off. I stand by that if Hover Junkers couldn't last, no shooter will last on VR in this generation. I was going to ask VR. you about yeah. that is when we were talking about how the community is going to be dead immediately. I was going to ask you about Hover Junkers because I remember that being such a big thing. You I was can wondering find if a lobby or two and that's about it. it. Not. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a couple a, people. That's it. Here's a question: What community is thriving right now in VR? None. I mean, none. Oh, there's Rec not. Room. Rec Room. Don't okay, I, I'll give you that. Rec Room is thriving, but mostly that's mostly because Rec Room is fucking everywhere. If you have a VR headset that is capable of VR, any headset that is capable of VR, you can play Rec Room. It was before that, even though that yeah, is yeah. that is just widely seen as possibly one of the best done things in VR. Yes, yes, it is because you can play with everyone. It doesn't matter what control you have. Doesn't matter what headset you have. You can jump into Rec Room and play some goddamn disc golf. And all the games are in a way where you can be competitive. You can try to win and stuff, but they're done silly in a way where even when you suck, you're having a fun time. Yeah. That's uh, good. Yeah, Rec Room, I would say, is probably the only, really, community in VR that hasn't completely dissipated it. It's honestly, to me, the only th reason you would think about getting a VR headset right yeah. now. Now, I, I will give this to Pavlov. Even though the bots are really stupid, they have bots. Which means I, I started up a server. It connected me to like a, a dedicated server, which, again, is fantastic. Well, it, filled, it filled all the slots with bots. And then... Random people jumped in my game to play with me, and they took the, the place of a bot. Um, so we still had full teams. It's just, you know, eight or so of the people were functionally dumb. But here's what happens. <laughs> it's dedicated servers. You're running. It's great. Six months from now, company folds. They don't patch the game. Dedicated you, servers are they gone. They have an offline option. Yep. So okay. if you just want to play with bots, I started because uh, I wanted to see, I wanted to actually get a feel for the gun play before I jumped in online. So I clicked mm -hmm. play offline and then I was in a bot match. It was okay. great. It was all running locally. It was a lot of fun. Um, one of the things uh, that they did really well, uh, because VR has got so many ways to cheese everything. Uh, so imagine you've got a super powerful one hit kill sniper rifle like the op, right? I can just sit around a corner, reach my arm out and fire around the corner at somebody, right? Um, if you're not holding the op with two hands, it will literally fly out of your hand about six feet backwards. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so I did that to a guy. I, like, I sniped his buddy, and then I was going to reload because you have an ammo pouch on your hip, and his other friend came in the room, so I turned around to try to no-scope him, and I shot, missed him, but now I have no gun, and he ran up and knifed me. Because if you can actually put your gun down and pull out a knife and 
you know, counter strike stab people. It's pretty fun. Um, that sounds yeah. pretty cool. I don't recommend it. Uh, if you're desperate for that kind of game, which I was, and pick it up, but I don't know. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't. do it. <laughs> um, the other game, uh, Res Infinite. I played this on the Vive. I played it in VR. Josh, you've played Res before. I have. I Tell have me. played D- Res. Explain, explain to the people at home, what is Res? Okay. Um, Res, it feels like a music-based game, but it's not. It's, you're just flying through what feels like lines. It, it, they're, they're, it feels super retro. You're, you're a guy, and you're flying through, and you're shooting things. And there's music going on, and it's weird. It's trancy. It's it'll give you a headache. <laughs> I remember getting seasick going through it the first time. If you're not into like strobe lights and just intense everything at you, um, it's a lot to take in. In fact, there was, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Tom, it's, it's it's flying through the air as a uh, almost rail shooter in a Tron like environment. Um, right. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'm jumping in. It's going to be res. I'm going to be flying first person and using the Vive controllers to fucking shoot shit. That is not what I got. Um, <laughs> what I got is a game that said, oh, res would be cool in VR. And they literally just took the camera that was watching your person and made it controllable by the headset. They have oh, okay. no idea how to build a VR game. Uh, as far as the rules of VR and how they make a good VR experience, they are breaking every fucking single one of them. Um, <laughs> Ooh. So I start the game, and I'm looking, and it's just like fucking blackness. I'm, what the shit? Is the game frozen or what? And I turn around to go sit on my couch to you know alt-tab out of this and take my head off, and there's some fucking logos in front of me. Like, literally, what you do in a VR game when you load this up is... Uh-huh. You load it up, you say, okay, my player is facing this way, this is their starting point for the screen. I'm going to put the loading screen, I'm going to put the logos, and everything will be from this point on. Um, and they didn't do that. They just picked an arbitrary place in space to throw all that shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, it was bad. Um, the fact that you're flying through space, but your your character is not you, you're just sitting there watching it, is weird. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not only that, they actually move the camera around on you. So when you're flying through space, they will shift your perspective forcefully, like not make you turn, but actually force shift the camera to the side. So there's a lot of good uh, nausea and vertigo that comes with that. Um, (laughs) A lot of good. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) The only reason, I'm not going to say this works for this game, because it absolutely doesn't. They have no idea what they're doing. Um, the only reason it is tolerable in this game is feeling fucking out of it and vertigo and like you're a disembodied head um, Mm -hmm. goes along with the way Rez plays Uh, that's what it is (laughs) it does does fit the thematic elements of the game Uh, I absolutely do not recommend this Um, I think Rez Infinite is a fantastic game Uh, play it on your own with a controller with a mouse and keyboard it's a fantastic rail shooter uh, and you can get into the music. But if you're buying this for a VR experience like I did, it is trash. Absolute trash. I will be playing this again. I will be playing it again in VR because there's something about being surrounded in that world with the music going, uh, which is really appealing to me. But it is an extremely poorly made VR experience. Uh, it was just <laughs> lazy. It was just fucking lazy. Hmm. I think it, I think you're... You, you just didn't have the full experience that comes with the standard edition of the game. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, I wanted to love Res Infinite. I had a good time yesterday, but, uh, there are just really, really bad gameplay decisions, uh, or game design decisions that this team made because you can't give me the excuse that they didn't know any better. I'm sure they didn't. But if I had a really successful, you know, cult classic franchise that I was going to layer a VR layer on top of, I'd Google, how the fuck do you make a VR game? And that's something they didn't do. And there's, there's just no excuse for that. This is laziness, pure and simple. Yeah. And uh, on, on, that, on that high note, uh, that's all I've been playing. Uh, 
I guess. Well, before you get to that, one thing I think we forgot to say. I want to get in there real quick. Yes. Um, GTA 5 is postcast this week. Oh, yes. So if yeah. you don't have it downloaded yeah. and you want to play with us, start that download. Start it now. Yeah. Start it an hour ago. Start it tomorrow. Start it yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, Irk, I know your list is kind of short. I want to throw it to you because I want you and Adam Tell us about this brand new game you guys picked up and have been fucking obsessed over. Also, yeah, tell crap. me how you feel about people jumping out of windows. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, fuck that woman. <laughs> so, Adam and I, during the last weekend, we referenced that Rainbow Six Siege was free. Um, yes. So, we gave it a try. This is not my first time trying out Rainbow Six. Um, well, Siege. I am a huge Rainbow Six fan. I have played Rainbow Six every iteration of it. I've played it online since Rogue Spear on. I love that j- series. Um, mm-hmm. When I got part of the closed beta, since uh, Vosbeck had a uh, code and let me in the closed beta, I was caught off guard. This was a different type of game. The gunplay felt the same, but it was a different type of game. Um, it was incredibly close quarters. There was this weird prep phase. That at the time I didn't understand, so I played in the beta and I bounced. Mm-hmm. And then two years later, Adam and I decide, hey, let's try it. So uh, we tried it, and we didn't bounce on one game like uh, someone we know in the chat did, and uh, yeah. we kept pushing we forward with fair, the game. A fair shot. So um, and then I started <laughs> to get the hang of it. And what caught me off guard with the game, I'll go ahead and explain right now, is it's terrorist good guy situation um Mm -hmm. the terrorists are defend inside this house defending a bomb or two bombs defending a uh chemical weapon or defending a hostage you need to get in that house and get the hostage out or defuse the bomb chemical weapon it's the Mm -hmm. entire objective so or first, kill the whole enemy team. Yes, or wipe the team. You wipe Which the, happens, honestly, most of the time. You wipe the team 95% of the times, that's the end of the round. The only time it's not the end of the round is if um, the offensive team placed a diffuser. You have to defuse it before, like in um, Counter-Strike. If they've planted the bomb, you have to defuse it even if you wipe the team. Um, so for the first 30 seconds of the match, the attackers get these little drones. And you drive these drones through the house and you're spotting things. You're trying to figure out where in this house is the bad guys protecting them. You're trying to see what bad guys there are because there's multiple classes with different abilities. Meanwhile, during that 30 seconds, these bad guys are trying to reinforce this house, make it harder for you to get to them. 30 seconds are up, all hell breaks loose. You storm the house, you're repelling up walls, you're kicking in boarded up windows, you're blowing up walls. If it's a wooden wall, and you know the other guy's on the other side of it, you can blow up the wall and then run through it. To not, and it's not just the wall is gone or the wall is there. You can, you can punch the wall to get just a very small circle of uh, view through it, and, I, and you can kill somebody through that little hole. It's, it's, uh, it's varying degrees of destruction. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's really nice because like something I've gotten used to doing, I'll have a sniper, I'll be repelling, I'll punch one plank out of the window boards, and I'll just stay on the repel and snipe through the window. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with that. The gunplay on this is vintage Rainbow Six. It is great gunplay. Um, I say vintage in like the way the guns feel and handle. There is a mm-hmm. leaning mechanic to this. It's heavily lean based. You're heavily not leaning, used. you're dying. Hmm. It's one of those games where you might see four pixels of the dude between the floorboards and you can get a kill that way. Yes. Mm, that kind of thing. You are not spongy. You do not take well to bullets. No, no. It's very, very quick to die. If you, if you start shooting at somebody and you land your shots, they're going down. As our uh, friend AOL so, Instant Messenger had noted about the game, it's, it's, got- re- it's really slow and has an anticipation. You know something's yeah. about to happen. And then the breach happens and the attackers start storming. And then it went from slow as hell to within 30 seconds, almost everyone's dead. Hmm. And then not, not, not in the way that people just run in, run in guns blazing. It's, it's got this weird, the, the, 
the gameplay is really slow as far as what you're doing until you start firing. <laughs> yes. It's like because because there's that every 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 time you expose yourself that's a huge risk because you might just immediately die. So you have to really think about what you're doing. You have to know where they are. You know, there's a lot of just barely peek and then run away and you know just uh, using your gadgets and stuff to kind of for surveillance and uh, using team comms, oh, heavily team comms. Yes, that's one I've thing I noticed not, about the I've game. I've not played an online. Go ahead. <laughs> so one thing I noticed about the game watching you guys is everyone has a mic uh, and everyone's yes. talking to each other. It's not shit talk like, "Hey, fuck you, mate. You totally missed your shot." It was, "Well, hey, yeah, I saw this that. guy third floor breaching from the ceiling. Watch left side." And you guys would, yeah. you know, gather around that point and wait for the dude to come in the ceiling. Um, mm-hmm. It was, hey, he took me out, landing on the stairs right side. And everyone knew what you were talking about. Uh, it does look like a game that is heavily, heavily, heavily reliant on knowing the map. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of knowing the map. Yes, knowing um, the map and then also knowing all the operators and what their gadgets are and how to deal with them. Yes. So there is a guy named Fuse, and he makes the room blow up. Like he puts something on a wall, that shoots <laughs> explosives through the Come wall. In the club. Huh. So yeah. um, he's really nice to know when you're going against him because if you don't, you'll just be sitting up in your corner waiting, and all of a sudden you hear a boom, do, 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 do. and once you hear that, it's too fucking late. You need to run. Okay. <laughs> so it's see, but, really but I, fun. But I did notice everything has a counter though because I played as Fuse three matches in a row. And didn't get a chance to use that because they had a mute, which has a signal jammer. And anything that needs, most most gadgets are electronic in some way. And anything that needs those electronics won't work in a certain area of the map because you placed the jammer down. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, there's something I guess like could, 20 operators that of also attack tips you off, though. Right? So if there's a signal jammer in an area near a room, you know the mm-hmm. objective is going to be... At jammer, when you yes, get close, if you haven't already spotted them in the the preparation phase, yes, okay, yeah. When you get close to the room, you know because okay. they reinforce the walls. It'll take you if you didn't find it in the prep phase. It may take you half the match to find the room, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it'll take you the whole rest of the map to figure out how the fuck you're getting into it without dying. Okay, yeah. I've been I've been looking at this game and and just as a PSA, um, I keep knocking this mic all over the place. Uh, just as a PSA, uh, look in your Steam inventory. If you're not the type of person to collect uh, those trading cards or even cosmetics you get in game, uh, I just got like probably 50 bucks worth of Steam credit just from selling all that shit yesterday. Uh, so I'm yeah. looking, I might buy Rainbow Six Siege because one of the people in chat bought it, hated it, refunded it, and got their money back pretty quick. Um, mm-hmm. So I think I might give it uh, a good hour tomorrow to uh, to try this. Um, quick note on purchasing this game. There's yeah. two options. Okay. There is the yeah. starter pack and then there's the standard. All right. So the starter, you get one operator for free and then every operator after I think that. It's, I think it's two. Okay. It's either two or attack, four and they're, and they're, it's, it's either, I can't remember if it's two or four, but it's selected randomly out of a, a pool of what they see as like the easiest guys to start with. Okay. That's nice. But here's the thing. That's the cheapest edition. It will take you 12,500 credits to unlock your next. In contrast, you buy the full version. You get no operators by default. But it costs 500 for your first in every faction. And then 1,000 for your second in every faction. So for that one operator you're buying in the other, you could get easily eight or nine. Easy. In standard. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there is no upgrade. Once you buy one, you're in it. Yeah. What you would have to do at that but, point is you can yeah. buy the actual operators outright, and the collective price of the operators isn't that much more than what it would have cost you to buy the full game if you buy the cheap one and later realize, yeah, I really like it. Okay. Now, when I buy this, I do have to use Uplay, don't I? Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. It's, See, it's, that, a, it's yeah. not intrusive so, at all. So really, yeah. the worst part of Uplay is... It's just another thing you have to add friends to and invite through the game. The last time but I installed it works Uplay, the same my... as Steam. You've got the overlay. It's whatever. The last time I installed Uplay, my computer caught on fire and it killed my dog. <laughs> Which I, I hear is actually okay. a known bug uh, for Ubisoft yeah. products anyway, so I might just have to put up with it. I don't have a dog anymore. Um, so. Yes. Also, 
I'm going to cut you off of that terrible dog story because uh, Bivens in chat definitely did call out something that we need to call out. This is half off right now on Steam sale. If you're yeah. interested, pick it up, get in our Discord. Adam and I will be playing this pretty heavily. We've been pulling in some new people into the community. So we have Siege players in the Discord. If you would like to play Siege, come in there, get the roll from us, and start calling out to people when you want to play. Yes. Yeah, I, I yeah, think I, I think I might I might try this out uh, tomorrow. I so I don't play tactical games at all. The most tactical I get is CS:GO. And by the way, I'm not tactical. I just use the AK and I die instantly. And that's how I play CS:GO. But I have fun while doing it. Um, I'm not slow. I'm not methodical. How slow is slow in Siege? You can run you have if you to want. Know what you're getting into. Yes. Okay. You're going to get punished if you just run in there. Guns blazing. If you, no were, information. if you got the good prep to start, you could play it decently fast, though. Or, or if I have a window. Yeah, I mean, you can... Yeah, but they'll you see can, you through the window, and then they'll shoot you before you can get okay. them to. But what Tom's referring to is, so the attackers are stuck inside the house, or the defenders are stuck inside the house. If you mm -hmm. leave the house, you have two seconds that you're allowed to be outside the house without dying. There is a clip on our Twitch... <laughs> of me playing i'm running around the house getting ready to start i'm like okay let's get this all of a sudden i hear a window break above me i'm like i have no teammates up there what's going on i turn and look this woman is jumping out of a window guns are blazing and kills me before she hits the ground it was pretty fucking impressive it really was that was amazing and that was how you start the round typically at the start of the round you run all the way to the house and you plan your breach without having a shot fired this woman just Pick me off, like just literally makes me think of like a jaguar jumping out of a tree and pouncing <laughs> on someone. It was just wicked. it was completely it was so, yeah. It she was so totally heavily died. directed. She, she was no so heavily chance. directed right at you. Yeah, <laughs> like, she, uh, she knew she was dying, and she's like, "That guy's gonna go with me." It just kills me. <laughs> completely awesome. outplayed. Understood exactly what she was doing. You, you, you can't even be mad. Like that was just no, skill. That was good. Yeah, and it was just, <laughs> who do I want to piss off? That one. Because it's a one-for-one -one trade. Yeah. But she's like, that one. All right, so tomorrow I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to try it out, and I'm going to play for an hour before I decide whether or not I'm going to buy it. I you will be around all day tomorrow. We're going to play. Yes, all right. I plan on playing almost all day tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I, I do have to show someone Elite Dangerous tomorrow, uh, but nice. uh, hopefully before that we can get in some Siege. Yes. And with that, that's really all I played. Other stuff I'll talk about next week. No big deal. Adam. Yeah. Yeah. What have you been up to outside of our siege binging? The siege binging has been 90% of it, but I did play some other games and I'm just going to talk about two of those other games real quick. We already talked about Battle Riot, Rocket League, nothing new, no news. Um, Overwatch. I played more Overwatch. I actually ended up buying Overwatch. So nice. You know, it's just a good game. I don't have anything specific to say about it, just that I did end up buying it and I'm going to keep playing it, which nice. I never you thought bought I'd it. Say. And then within this is, a this day. This is one of those games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And ahead. then I bought Siege and then now I haven't played anything else after that. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Overwatch is a game that I never was interested in when it came out. Not even a little. I, I had no interest whatsoever. We did a, uh, had a free weekend. We did a postcast thing. Um, I thought, why not? You know, it's free. Played it that one weekend. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's kind of a lot to get into, so I didn't really, it didn't catch me. Second free weekend. I'm a little more familiar. We played it again, and I actually have a lot of fun with it. And I ended up buying it because it was half off. So, you know, free weekends are effective. I've come to know. Yes, because we uh, actually almost pulled the trigger on uh, Titanfall 2 because of that. Yeah. Yes, we did. Just about. Um, then I played. Now that it is free, I played StarCraft 2, which uh, a good friend of mine, uh, it's his favorite game. He knows a shit ton about this game. He's very heavily invested in it. Uh, he kind of showed me how it worked, and we played through a couple of matches. Um, he kind of coached me through a match against AI. Uh, holy crap, it's a lot of information to take in. I'm starting <laughs> to realize that maybe I've grown out of RTSs a bit. Maybe they're just too much for me. I think no. you just. I, it, I it think was, it's just it like was any, very overwhelming. Uh, it was overwhelming. I think RTSs are just like any other game, though. Like you gotta want it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you, you really gotta want to play. But, 
they have a pretty steep learning curve though oh yeah well i mean there's no there's no question about that but i mean that's i know if i was super you you like like yeah. Well, that's that's what I, the the campaign is for in in StarCraft, right? You you go through the mm-hmm. campaign and you learn all the units for your mm-hmm. particular uh, for for the Terrans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you know, you know, this counters this and this gets countered by this and you can go into multiplayer and win like maybe one game against another noob before the rest of the pros show up and just wipe you. Honestly, <laughs> when it comes to RTSs, I don't enjoy playing against people too much. Age of Empires is about the only one I really like playing against okay. people because I feel mm-hmm. when you play against people, it changes the pace of the game. Yes, it does. Oh my God, it gets so much faster. It gets so much faster to the point where you're not advancing up the tech tree as much. Yeah. You still eventually do it, but I, I know, especially in at StarCraft 1, the ga- name of the game was kill your opponent as fast as possible. So StarCraft to me represents... Um, just APM is the absolute king of RTSs, right? It's not really oh, yeah. about the strategy. It's not about the counters. It's if you can click and issue action orders more than your opponent can, you win. Doesn't matter what I mean, you got. Doesn't matter styles. what your strategy Super. is. It's, yeah. it's not that cut and dry. There's no way. There's still no, a lot of paper scissors. There's way too much. There's way too much involved. I, with I it. haven't. I, I haven't seen a lot of that. To me, it's all been APM. Really? But but I'm really slow at these games. I play them at a really yeah. slow pace. I, I build my army. I build my base. Like, I get everything together, and I've got a strategy that could probably, you know, fall apart. But mm-hmm. because someone has done it way faster than me, you know, halfway through me building my units, somebody has already wiped me off the map. Yeah. I'm a base builder guy. I, mean, I like yeah. to build up my defensive structures, exactly. sit behind yeah. them, amass an army, and then and strategically pick them up. In off. multiplayer, you can't do that. You cannot play that way because somebody who's faster than you will absolutely wreck you each every time. Because you always build offensive units because they also function as defense. Well, I mean, beyond that, you it's not even just that. I mean, you could you build up you have a process right there's a build process that you're supposed to do in starcraft i mm-hmm. i used to play a bunch of that and i used and a friend of mine got really deep into that and uh, friends with a lot of people that play it it's like a process you pick a, a thing you're going to do and if you can do that fast you're going to you know excel right but you know at some point you're going to even out with like how fast that person is versus you and then it's about strategy yeah the speed has a lot to do with it, but you can still counter people. You're still going to play. It's really deep, and if we haven't like spent a lot of time with it, it's really hard to critique it in that manner because it's crazy deep. That game, that game is insanely deep. Yeah, I I don't I don't know if I could get into multiplayer RTS games uh, simply because it seems like there's no casual option. Right? It seems oh, like no. when, oh, when you no. jump into a multiplayer <laughs> RTS, you are either tryharding or you're dead. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I don't know if I like that because, like in in Counter Strike or in Overwatch, right? I can jump in and fuck around and still have a good time. I don't have to go like full crazy esports MLG action guy. Uh, I can just get in and have a good time. And in StarCraft, I don't think I can. At least no. when when I played uh, Planetary Annihilation, when you and I got into that off the Kickstarter, you know, playing multiplayer <laughs> in that game, I got wrecked every single time. I did it for like a day yeah. and I quit and I never went back to it because there was there's just no way unless you try to go full esports with it, you can't compete at all. Or you'd have familiarity. I since I had familiarity with the planetary concept, I was able to kind of pace. Yeah. Where I got whipped was whenever. Um, I stopped playing for a little bit and people got a lot better at orbitals because that's yeah. where I wasn't as strong. Yeah, that was kind of clumsy to control, I thought, in that one. Yes. The orbitals, it always got kind of weird. It was a shame that they didn't follow through because that game had a lot of promise. I, mm. I really like RTS games. I think they're extremely enjoyable. Warcraft 3 is one of my favorite games of all Um. But in the campaign alone, I, I don't think I've ever had a great time in multiplayer unless I'm playing someone completely casually, just like myself. No, no, no. So the big thing with that multiplayer that I, StarCraft 1 had this too. It's the other games. It's the tower defense. It's the hero defenses. It's those are where the multiplayer was great. Um, I don't know. I had a good time in Warcraft 3's multiplayer. Ah. I, yeah. Even in the base multiplayer, like not Dota, not tower defense, not any of the hero modes or RPG modes. Like I just had a good old time. Um, uh, Sins of a Solar Empire is another great RTS game that I had a fantastic time with back in the day, but only playing against people who sucked just as much as me, and we just fucked around and had a good time. I'm just looking forward to Age of Empires. It was announced. I'm ready yeah. for it. 
Yeah. I'll try it. <laughs> well, now that we hijacked your StarCraft conversation, Adam. Yeah, yeah. sorry about that. <laughs> well, I think I said everything I need to say about it. Um, it's just a lot to take in. And uh, mm-hmm. as mentioned before and mentioned in the chat, uh, you, you kind of got to try hard and learn or it's not going to be that much fun. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where I'm sitting with that. I'm not sure how much I'm willing to put into that, but, but it's you, should, um, play, it's you should play free. the story. It is free. Yeah, it is free. That's a you good should, point. I should this, I should probably this, go through the campaign and that's honestly, a much like when I learned. Yeah, when I played StarCraft, I think I had the most fun playing through the story. The story is fun. It's not like the greatest thing you've ever seen in your entire life, but it's oh, really yeah. good and it's worth your time. And you'll yeah, get exposure it's, it's a good to the ride. game in a good pace where you don't get utterly destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. The campaign is so fun. And it's like mm-hmm. it's really the, enjoyable and the stressful just, parts of the StarCraft 2 campaign and in Wings of Liberty is the only one I can I can speak to. Uh the stressful parts are really good, even though they're stressful. They never feel unfair. You always feel okay. like when you lose, you know you did something bad, and you have something different to try next. Right. Okay. It's good. You should try it. I, will I can't. Wa- I can't wait to hear the report on that one. <laughs> yeah. And Adam, All right. One more, one more game, and it. Yeah. I this read it cool. as fun, and I know it's yeah. not called fun. No, oh, it's no, it's not. Eye. That's an eye. Your, your text you're is way really too small. Far away, if if your eyes are bad and or you're far away from the screen, it might look like fun, but it it's actually like fun Fury. F U R I Fury. Uh, this was a game gifted to me by Dark Soul Invader. Most of us are very familiar with Dark Soul Invader. Really cool dude. He also mm-hmm. streams, so you know, check that out. Oh, but, check um, him out. Yeah, I was. I was. Uh, we were playing. What were we playing? We were playing something. And I was going to, I needed to take a break from that something. For some reason, I still can't picture what it was. Might have been uh, Rocket League or something. But um, <laughs> he gifted me this game. And he's like, hey, this is a game you would like. You should play this instead if you're sick of that other game. So I was like, all right, perfect. And it's kind of, uh, how do I describe this game? Because I don't, I haven't played a whole lot of games like this. It's definitely, I don't want to say brawler, but it's a, it's, it's like a one, one on one, third person fighter thing. You've got a sword and you've got a gun, and you can dash and you can parry. Uh, it's got a really cool soundtrack. It's got a, a weird sort of futuristic vibe to it. I'm trying to think of games to compare this to, but I can't really think of anything. Hmm. But hmm. it's very fast paced, uh very cool. Uh my reaction time is garbage, so it was tough for me. It's very challenging. I don't know how challenging it is for others. But very cool game. It was super cheap. I'm gonna be playing more of it for sure. Um soundtrack was awesome. Had that retro synth wave soundtrack that a lot of other games I think are employing because it's awesome. Who doesn't love that stuff? It's awesome. Yeah, I right? just hope it doesn't get beat <laughs> to the ground. Well, yeah, anything, anything, is, anything will be. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I only played it for maybe an hour, but it was awesome. A look right. into it. If you, if you just watch a video of it, it'll make a lot more sense. I'm bad at explaining things. <laughs> good, man. Since I haven't played another game like it, I can't really make any direct comparisons, but just check it out. Fury, F-U-R-I. And I All think right. that wraps that, that wraps me up as far as games for this week. Yeah. Uh, we also got a few news items real quick. Yes. So, going to hit you with some quick news. Uh, the company Tencent <laughs> has been uh, chosen to localize Player Unknown's Battlegrounds for China. Um, They're getting huge. Yes, yes, they are. But Tencent yep. has been challenged to bring PUBG more in line with socialist values. And that is a direct quote. So I don't know what that means. What? Like, are they, is everyone going to be wearing army uniforms and everyone else is wearing like an American <laughs> army uniform? Like, I, I don't know I, what that means, but that is what they've been tasked to do. Hmm. Yeah. The, weird. More yeah. in line with socialist values. So whenever you yeah. find ammo, it splits it between everyone else in the game? <laughs> yes, yes, probably. That's <laughs> yeah. probably what happens. There you go. So the... I don't understand. The game is how all about getting into the circle and holding hands. Oh, it's not what? just the well, socialist values, nice. but it says changes will highlight the spirit of teamwork and competition in the game, making sure it delivers healthy and positive cultural and value 
guidance, especially for underage users. How are you going to do that for a battle royale game? When the community <laughs> is cancer, if yeah. you ever have oh my the, God. the team or the team speak stuff unmuted, my God, it's cancer. <laughs> so, so there. Oh, it's so no good. It's the no best. Clip did an interview with Player Unknown. Uh, they just recently released this video. It's excellent. Go and watch it. Uh, in this thirty-minute interview, he said, "You know, I don't know how I feel. You know, creating something that's so fun and so hated all at the same time. Because someone said I used to think hell sounded like Vuvuzelas or something, and now I just imagine hell sounds like the uh, the pre-match in Battlegrounds. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh cold. yeah, that's Airplane. pretty bad. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, Once you other, get out of it, yeah." Yeah. Okay, in, okay. in other news, uh, To the Moon, a game that Adam and I are very, very familiar with, and oh, yes. uh, it does make the short list of games where it is okay to cry no matter who you are. Uh, to the Moon <laughs> has been, uh, the sequel has been announced, and it gets a release date. Yes. And since I'm a bad podcaster, I don't actually know what that is. And that doesn't matter. It, it's yeah, it doesn't matter. Out. It'll it be good. Matter. We'll, it we'll talk matter. about it. It'll, it'll December be... 14th. Yeah, and I can't wait to be sad for six hours. Oh my god, it just it wrecked <laughs> me, man. To the moon fucking wrecked me. I need to play it again because yeah. I just haven't had a good cry in a long time. Now, I now that I know what I'm going into, trailer. yeah, it's I, it's so good. If you want, if you now want, now that I not, know what I'm going into, I'm gonna prepare. Oh yeah, like I've got I've got the box of tissues there. I've yeah. got like some diced onions just so I've got an excuse. Some, some wine, Wonderful. yeah, a gallon Favorite of ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah, uh, favorite ice creams in the freezer. Like I'm gonna make sure it's daylight outside, <laughs> so I can step outside and get some sunlight. I'm just I'm uh, fucking ready for this. So uh, yeah, yeah, we will absolutely be talking about this because I will be first in line. I love To the Moon. Um, it's one of those games you need the rehabilitation afterwards. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Marvel Heroes. Uh, the developer behind that gazillion lays off everyone uh, right before Thanksgiving. So. Oh wow! So yeah, fucking shit. Happy hey, holidays. What's even worse is this game. If I remember right, just like six, seven months ago, it came to consoles. So this has been yeah. on computer PC for a while. They just brought it over to consoles, and now they're saying, "Fuck it, we're done." There, there was some controversy um, because this game does heavily utilize uh, loot boxes and a bunch of the free to play model stuff. Uh, and Disney is getting really gun shy thanks to Battlefront Two about this. So they said, "Hey." Uh, we're going to shut off Marvel Heroes. And the developer said, okay, we're going to shut off all of our developers' livelihoods. Thanks. Um, wow. So, yeah, that sucks. Uh, Clicker Heroes 2 actually just put out a blog post where they are, uh, or the developers behind Clicker Heroes 2 put out a blog post where they are completely abandoning free-to-play. Um, they said it's, you know, while they are shutting off a giant revenue stream for the game, uh, it is absolutely ruining them as far as morality and sleeping at night. So I like the URL well, for that one. <laughs> yeah, there was quickerheroes two dot com slash pay to win dot php. Yep, <laughs> this was from Giant Bomb. I heard this, but they were there was a uh, Kentaku or Kentaku had a interview with one of the Korean free to play microtransaction mobile games, and he was as quoted as saying they are going to ruin it. He's like, this is our business model. This is how we've made our livings. He's like, EA and what they're doing is going to ruin this business model. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? Oh, yeah. I, it's Honestly, um, I, I don't like the free-to-play business model. I don't like that style of gameplay. I don't like what it, it, how it uh, exploits human psychology. I don't like it. But when your game costs zero dollars, you have to make money somehow. And I get it. I understand it. And honestly, I see nothing wrong with using that business model in a free game you have to recoup your costs somehow and that's a really effective way to do it now paying 60 bucks for a game and doing this yeah that that's kind of shitty yeah i mean but, I, but I didn't beat, want to rehash beat that topic into the ground it's just the idea that even the free-to-play companies are saying yeah this is getting cancerous around us yeah. our model is going to die and not because of us yeah oh yeah mm -hmm. absolutely right. i completely agree that way you still can yeah yeah. Um, Splatoon 2. Some giant updates are planned. Nintendo is continuing to uh, toot the horn on the Splatoon 2 hype train. Uh, so they're pretty much in short, they're doing what they did for Splatoon 1. Yeah. Um, they are continuing to grow this game. This game is not going to die. It is their embodiment of what everyone's calling the living game. Uh, so there's going to be five new maps. Uh, a few of them were the heavily favored maps from Splatoon 2, or Splatoon 2 1, really, Splatoon. 
Um, <laughs> there's going to be new game mode added to this. There's going to be some new character creation stuff to customize your character. And they are raising the level cap, yeah. which I also take that to mean they are going to be adding more guns into the foray. Yeah, um, it'll it'll be interesting. I like seeing all these updates from Nintendo for for a company that just doesn't get how online works. They sure get how to keep an online game running. Yeah, well, okay. Splatoon is their golden child when it comes to multiplayer. Yeah, it's their only example of getting it right. And even then, they didn't get it quite 100% right, but they got it right enough where it's really good. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I enjoy Splatoon. I don't play it nearly as often as I think I should, but it's enjoyable. And the last time I checked, I think that's still the only game linked to the Nintendo Switch mobile app. It's, that is the only way to talk on game. I think <laughs> you're right. I will need to see if recent releases have changed that, but I don't believe so. So this is coming close to what we're about three months away from a year yeah and there's only one game on this and at the end of this year you have to pay for it what the fuck are they charging for yeah uh, no one no one is going to pay 20 bucks a year to play splatoon 2 online i'm not paying that for a game i'm not paying that for one game i will with with basically no voice chat with no anything with like if you gave me the xbox live ecosystem but you had one game if you had splatoon 2 in the xbox live ecosystem all right, I see what you're doing. I see what you're charging for. I get it. I will pay that. But Nintendo is literally charging for a pile of dog shit with a nugget of gold in the middle. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just not going to pay for it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to reward that behavior. I will because they get I no want treats. to play the game. No I'm, treats. Bad Nintendo. I'm not Bad. going to punish myself. <laughs> Bad. But down boy, you, Tom. It's a good game. All right. You should play it, in Tom. bigger news, uh, and something we should talk about. Belgium is making a move to ban loot boxes. They've done some internal reviews. Uh, they've taken a look. They said, "Yeah, this is clearly gambling. It's clearly targeting children and people who are underage." Uh, and they are starting to move towards the EU to try to get a full ban underway. If it hits EU levels, okay. we might see change. Belgium yeah. only, we won't. Belgium's got like what three people, four people who play video games. I'm no. just kidding. I'm just kidding. But but <laughs> you know, realistically, in the global market, Belgium banning loot boxes and banning games that contain loot boxes is a drop in the bucket compared to everything else. Now, if the EU, I agree with you. If they say, yeah, no, fuck you, go fuck yourself, yeah, that could change. It's remember, it's the EU who actually pushed Valve to uh, put a refund system at all into Steam. Uh, and it worked. It worked, right? We now have a refund policy. We're all better for it. Even us in the States who didn't do anything like this to Valve, we get to reap the benefits of playing Rainbow Six Siege for 23 minutes and deciding, nah, fuck this game and getting our money back. <laughs> so I, th I think it's a good step. Just um, not yeah, sure we'll it see. means anything yet. Uh, there is a, actually a representative in, in Hawaii uh, that's saying we need to ban loot boxes. Um, I don't think it really carries much weight, uh, but people in the U.S. are starting to look at this as well. If the U.S. I think a it, lot of the article yeah. states, too, that they're really focusing on uh, restricting for minors. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah, still going to the, be loot boxes. It's just I, I could sure see the loophole. Contain them contain. Well, what would happen, though, is that would make games like uh, Overwatch and stuff like that, who actually have a teen rating, I believe have to carry an M rating because of loot boxes. Well, that no, is... no. Here's, here's, here's the thing, all right? Not to give these lawyers uh, anything they don't already have, but if I'm a lawyer for Activision Blizzard, I say, well, how are your kids buying these loot boxes, right? We, we, have, yeah, right. A, we have a storefront. Yeah. It has a, a credit card thing, right? They can put in their credit card numbers. Mm -hmm. Did those children apply for credit cards? How are, how are they doing it? Did the parents allow them to use the credit cards? Oh, so the parents gave the credit cards to their children to make these purchases. So clearly, it's the parents buying loot boxes and not the kids themselves. That argument's been proved not right. to work. That, that argument in court Is, has not held up because it happened with Apple, and Apple was forced to... Uh, go against it then they can they can use that case law but what i'm saying is it's a really easy argument to make um i without They're... banning this game design practice outright i don't know how the eu is going to handle this slap an m on it 
It could be. It absolutely could that be. Would right? kill, that would kill a lot of games. It would. It, it would will. destroy you know what a lot that'll of mean? Games. That'll mean a lot of games will stop doing loot boxes. That's true. That's true. Because uh, it, true. Is, it is very well known that an M rating or, or uh, a high Peggy rating on a game will actually uh, decrease sales specifically because parents will look at that and go, M rating. I'm not going to well, read the back of the box. Unless it's, I don't Grand, even know Th- what unless this... it's Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, in yeah, which no, case no, no. the parents don't give <laughs> well, two fucks. The moms hate it, I mean, but the dads are like, I want to see All this. you have to do, <laughs> at, least, at least in America, right? Europeans are completely different, but all you have to do is you, you tell them, okay, this game, you're disembodying people, you're eating their livers, you're making a pie out of, out of babies and consuming it in front of their mothers who are crying, and parents would be like, no, that sounds like an appropriate game for my four-year-old, but you say, hey, look, there's a titty in this game. Holy shit, the world's on fire. Oh they can't see a boob. <laughs> There's a nipple. Shut it down. Go to the media. We have to take Rockstar to court immediately. There's a bare breast in this game. Did What was that, that yeah. TV show, Hannibal? Did you mm-hmm. see the, the before and after? There was a dispute because there was a scene of these uh, two mutilated dead bodies, but you could see their butt cracks. So they had them add more oh, blood gross. to cover up the bl- <laughs> butt crack, and it was totally fine. Yep. Yeah, there's a percentage of butt crack you're allowed to show. It's a fact. Yeah, as long as it's covered in blood, that's fine. Oh my gosh! But like well, game games like Overwatch getting hit with that is really bad because those are those are like geared towards everybody. Yeah. Well, what oh Bivens just called out Rocket League. Rock League is yeah. every, easily yeah. an E rating, or what is it? Does it E or a teen? It's got to be E. Because There's the nothing online, to make that online teen. play potentially. Yeah, the ESRB yeah. says it's not including anything yeah. online. So yeah, that's an E. Got to be. It would go from an E to an M potentially. Yeah, unless that would sink Rocket League. That would that would hurt. Now, granted, the people who bought Rocket League uh, or were going to buy Rocket League probably already have it. Uh, but that said, right. when you when you go to buy Rocket League on the Nintendo Switch, right, and you see it's an M rating, really want to buy that for your kids? Yeah, you you, you and I would look at the game and then flip <laughs> yeah, over the box and, awesome. and go, "Oh, it's just because of loot boxes." Fuck that! My kid can have it; they don't get the credit card. Um, but a parent who's not going to flip over the back of the box, and most of them don't, are going to say, "Ooh, M rating? Mm, no, sorry, Billy, you can't get that. You get Grand Theft Auto." <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have one more bit of news that I'm not too familiar with. So, Tom, tell us about Destiny changing their experience system. Yeah, so it looks like um, Bungie tried to do... um I would consider it uh, a good thing with their loot system where they say, hey, uh, in these public events, which you can quickly and easily grind them out in grind experience and it doesn't really take much gameplay, uh, we are going to limit the amount of XP that actually goes onto your XP bar that actually counts towards player progression because they don't want people grinding out the same missions over and over again and getting shit. I I get it. The loot cave was a thing in Destiny 1. They wanted to change that. Um, But... Uh, it turns out that they were doing this for a ton of missions, even stuff that was difficult, that took multiple people. Um, you would get, you know, the same amount of XP, the same, you know, number amount, but the stuff that would actually count towards player progression was 10%, not even 10%. Players discovered this, they did the math, they called Bungie out on it, and Bungie is now rolling back the entire system. It looks like it was there to get people to play more and grind more. Hmm. Yeah. From what I've seen, though, the experience That's wasn't weird. much of an issue on that game to hit max level. No, no, no not to hit max level, but uh, to grind out experience to get the Destiny 2 equivalent of loot boxes, or you could buy them, is why you would grind mm. out experience points. Hmm. So, so by they'd limiting... be getting 5,000 experience every match consistently, but the bar would be moving up less each time. So it looks like they're not making as much progress. Yeah. So instead of getting all the loot boxes that you should be earning, you could just pull out your handy dandy super, you know, level 20 (laughs) credit card and swipe those loot boxes right into existence. Isn't that what they're doing in, um, in Battlefront right now? They're doing some weird stuff in Battlefront right now, like using like rubber Uh, bands and stuff to keep you, keep people active and people are finding all these like crazy workarounds and stuff. I mean, it's a classic workaround. They used to do it in GTA, but, uh, like, I mean, um, like people will find workarounds for something for everything. <laughs> so I'm just curious about like with all this 
all these weird experience systems that are coming out, all these really bizarre, like almost like exploiting the player <laughs> in a way just to keep them There's... keep them engaged. Like what kind of exploits I, are going to be? I, it's not to keep them engaged anymore. It's to get them to wa- need to grind a lot or pay to not grind. That's that's not it. That's totally not. It. That is it in some cases, right? Especially when you're looking at EA with Destiny. It's really yet to be seen, but I'm kind of leaning towards the credit card versus grind. Um, but there right. are good game design reasons to do stuff like that, right? So if you've got an MMO and you say, hey, yes, you can repeat quests. You can go back and you know take out this tower and do this thing. Um, but we're going to give you less experience each and every time you do it because you want to push people to uh, see more content, to see more of your game. I totally get that. Even if your end goal is for them to run out of content and run out of XP so they can go buy the next expansion pack, I get it. You're pushing people to see more of the game. You're pushing them to experience more of the game and not get caught up in the grind. That's different, though, than it, it telling is. them it's 5,000 experience and only actually being absolutely. 500. Absolutely. Absolutely. What Bungie should right. have done is they said, hey, look, you've done this a lot in a row. You're going to get diminishing returns, right? It's like when you try in an RPG, when you buy an item and sell it back to the shop. I bought the sword for 100. I'm selling it back at 60. Oh, fuck. I just lost 40 gold. Unless, yes. Until you're at max level around, baby. Yeah, it's it's diminishing returns. <laughs> totally get it. It can be used as a good game design tactic, but it needs to be transparent. Hmm. Huh. But that's that's all I had. That's all the gaming news we have. Do we have anything else except for the postcast game after this? We have a postcast game. Okay. All right. Postcast <laughs> game after this. Yes. So time the for game that everybody and their mother owns now. Apparently. That for me. Um, except for you. What? Wait, what are you talking about? Really? How yeah. do you not own that? I don't own GT. Oh shit! Well, how are you gonna play with us? Oh, Urk's I, mom won't let him see it. There's a nipple in the it's game. It's an M rating. I can't play oh, M rated games. No. Yeah. yeah. Urk, what the use heck? Of alcohol. I doesn't can't she know that, that Grand Theft Auto is the exception? Yeah. There's no, every, there's, no uh, there's no loot boxes in Grand Theft Auto. Let's go over to in, Billy's yeah, house. Billy's mom lets him play. Down. Billy's mom lets him play GTA. We can go over to Billy's. So we're going to drive over to Billy's house, and then we're going to have a postcast game of Grand Theft Auto. So just stick around after this. Jump in with us. Um, if you don't have it, if you just want to watch, if you just want to chill, jump in the Discord with us. If you um, want to play, go to Billy's house. He lives on 4456 Wallaby Lane. In Australia. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wallaby anyway, Lane. with that, we will go to the rundown <laughs> of if you are watching us on Twitch. You guys should jump over to our YouTube channel and check out some of the content we have there. We or do. if you missed a podcast, you just want to hear what Tom was bitching about in that week. Bitch, bitch, you can bitch, go bitch, find bitch. all our old podcasts at 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. If you're one of the few watching the podcast there instead of live, you should venture over to Twitch Saturday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And every other time. To watch us stream <laughs> our podcast live and randomly through the week as we do other games and series such as Dark Souls uh three co-op runs and we have the 12 games of christmas we're doing good times if you hate what we drone about want us to talk about different shit or just have general suggestions you can tweet at us at 72 pc podcast if you would like to grab some rss feeds like a barbarian you can go to our website of 72 pinconnector.com and get all the rss feeds from our website as well as links to all of our sources and if you're just a normal person that likes podcasts, go to iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, whatever you want, and find us. We're on all of them. And with that, that's really all we got for you guys this week. So, yeah, that's see you all it. on Postcast. And until next week, game on. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye. See ya.